Hey. The man of the hour, yay! <laughs> the, so sorry. The, the, listen, Gramps, we would wait until tomorrow for you, oh, so gosh. it's okay. <laughs> And we would I, wait until tomorrow. I had such a bad headache, man, and they just knocked me out. Well, you know, you're busy. You got a lot going on. So we totally understand. We are patient, you know, yes. and we just said we're going to wait. It doesn't matter. I'm waiting for Graham. So we thank you so much for just taking time oh, out of your day to spend time with us here mucho, at Caribbean Life TV. Mucho, mucho. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I've just been playing your song on repeat yeah. the whole time, people like you. But before we get into that, first thing first, I want to wish you a happy belated birthday. I know you celebrated your birthday last week. So blessed Earth Strong to you. Thank you so much. And secondly, just want to check in, you know, these are difficult times. Want to check in, how are you and your family doing during these times? Well, it's a special time, you know. This is a moment of our lives that we will remember for the I rest know. of our lives, you know. I know. Absolutely. It's, it's given me, you know, a chance to talk with my big brothers and sisters and my little brothers and sisters, because we've been on the go since 1999, you know, when Don't Have to Tread took the world. And that right. message went out to the world, and we just now getting a chance to catch up. So it's good and right. bad. Uh, we, we lost a lot of money, and a lot of musicians lost a lot of money during this time. All of our touring's been canceled, but I get some. I got a chance to take my son to school, you know? And, and oh, walk into his classroom. Yeah, and have little... You know, little lunch with 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 um. The, the, you know, you go to parent teacher lunch and then the teacher right. parent and student lunch. So I've really been enjoying those things, and and you know, a lot of times, as as a man and and and, and as just human beings, we have to reflect on our life and say, hey, how can I be better? And right. hence this solo project just coming back, and I just wanted to be a better songwriter and. You know, meeting my friend Johnny Reed from Halo Entertainment and going to the studio and it just all started and me and this man just clicked and the rest is history. Yeah, so you met Johnny Reed by chance that you were in the studio, he was recording the song and you heard it, is that correct? No, and they, I met him at a, at a hockey game in Nashville, Tennessee where I spent a lot of time. And I live between mm -hmm. Nashville, Tennessee, and St. Thomas, Jamaica. And when I mm -hmm. met met the man, it, we just kicked it off. He said he had a brand new studio, Soul Train Studios, where he had a, some amazing microphones. And of course, I wanted to see them. And he, mm -hmm. the, the microphones that Johnny Cash had sang on, and and, and oh, uh, wow. Willie Nelson, and I wanted to see it. So I went, and right. the rest is history. <laughs> Nice, nice. When you heard the song, so what was it that you heard in the song that inspired you to want to remake it? Um, the pain, the pain of losing my uncle to the coronavirus. You know? Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. My sincerest condolences yeah, um, to you and your family. Yeah, and it kind of just hit me heavy, you know, hit me heavy. Like, that's my father's brother, my father's younger brother. So it's like, Yo, wow. this thing is this thing doesn't have no it doesn't care about no color, no class, it, it, it doesn't care about anything. And then boom, shortly after that, Bobby Digital passed away. Five days right. later. And I'm like, Right. So I'm at routine, I'm working, hanging out with Johnny at Soul Train and he said, Man, you need to put your voice on this man, you know, he's with his Scottish accent. And <laughs> And I said, man, and it, we, I sang that song in two hours, you know, and it just. Really? But the, it, it's the expression of that energy that I was in, you know, that you really mm -hmm. get to feel that energy in the song. What made you want to add the choir in there as well? Oh, that's just the genius of Johnny. 
<laughs> you know, okay. Yeah, man, he, he's a brilliant, he's a brilliant producer and songwriter and, and a wonderful man. And he, he's just a, an amazing human being. Nice. Shout out to Johnny. Shout out to Halo Entertainment. Shout out to Tracy and yes. Rico and everyone else that helped to put this together. You know, when I first heard the song, clearly, you know, you hear the country in, in the music, even before I knew that it was recorded in Nashville. But I've always felt like country music and Caribbean music have a kinship, you know. I remember growing up, my mother would play, I think his name was Jim Reeves. I don't know. She had this song just on repeat from Jim Reeves. Yeah. She just loved country music. What do you think it is between country music uh, and Caribbean music? What attracts the two together? That's a brilliant question and very wise. Um, Caribbean people are music connoisseurs. We are. We love music from all over the world. If you go to a Caribbean party and the early juggling, and you can talk to people like Rico Vibes and Tony Mataran and DJs that know how to get a party started. You're gonna hear Michael Jackson. You're gonna right. hear. You're gonna hear so many different genres of music. You're gonna hear a Kenny Rogers. You're gonna hear a Lionel Richie. That's Caribbean people. But there is right. this factuation of how the music them relate to each other when you talk about mm -hmm. in the 50s and the 60s there was only country stations from the from the south that was reaching jamaica before we got our own radio stations that even when you see the the, the cowboy movies it, jamaica has this infatuation with with country western movies and even <laughs> of, you know you know go ahead make my day you talk about that kind of of a bad boy cowboy kind of culture that a lot of people don't even realize. If you listen to a man named Josie Wales, those were from uh, West John, That's right. You know? That's they, right. You know? That's all, right. Tony Lick Shop, all these names are from the whole Western bad boy. And if you, you ask a lot of sound, sound systems in Jamaica, one of their favorite music is country music. When you go to a dance in the middle of the ghetto, you're going to hear some country music, some Charlie Pride and some Kenny Rogers and some old Dolly Parton. Because when Rice and Peas was being made on a Sunday in the Caribbean, <laughs> I'm sure you're on the Caribbean, country music was being played. And I think it's a story that God has really put me um, in the place to say, hey, I need you to tell this story of how these two songs, these two genres relate and people don't realize it. And also the storytelling in the way country music tells great stories it's the same way in reggae music you listen to the till shiloh album um that just went gold with congratulations to my brother buja bant on his album till shiloh mm -hmm. went gold and you know you listen to the lyrics and, the, and, the, and the, the prophetic words and the storytelling you'll find out that we have a lot in common right yeah man. it's so true it's so true like i said my mother grew me up on you know country music so r.i.p millicent so now i know you mentioned bobby digital you know famed jamaican producer who recently passed away i understand that they played your song at his funeral and people were just moved to tears um were you there first of all and secondly have you yet to perform the song publicly no i haven't performed the song publicly as yet i've been asked by one or two people as you know, the world is shut down and there hasn't been any live concerts. I see Anthony B did some live concert in the middle of Germany. <laughs> so big up to Anthony B. I think Anthony B is one of the first artists to perform on a live stage. It wasn't a big stage, but it was a lot of people. It was more than uh, 200 people. And I wasn't able to attend Bobby Digital Funeral, of course, not even my uncle. We had to do it online. So, oh, okay. you know, I, I, I was able to watch it online. And it, it, when they played mm -hmm. the song along with Bobby Digital Pictures, Trudy, his daughter, Trudy Dixon, um, put the whole thing together. It just moved me like, I was like, wow. To see the picture with, Bobby's picture with the song, it just, it brought on a whole lot of energy, you know? Right, right. Man. The song... You know, uh, 
people like you, what does that mean for you? And what do you want others to feel when they hear this song? Because I know when I hear it, yes, you know, only my closest friends know this secret, but I'll tell y'all, I'm a yeah. big crybaby. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the tough on the outside, but I'm a big crybaby. But when I hear this song, I yeah. get extremely emotional. Yeah. Was that by design? It's, it's what I wanted to do is for the young men of the Caribbean, young black men around the world to be inspired because we have issues that needs to be fixed. If you realize a couple of days ago over the weekend, a young one year old baby was shot dead in the street like a dog, you know, based on senseless killing. I want to inspire those guys to say, hey, we can be better. Look within yourselves and make the change. Do you want to, at the end of your life, when you're 65, 70 years old, or 50, or 40 years old, to know that there's a place beyond this life, beyond this flesh? Do, don't you want to feel appreciated? So it's in that sense. And also, when it comes to people not feeling appreciated, it's like we'll wait till people are dead before we can celebrate them. You know? And right. I have the saying that I say, give me my flowers now. Don't wait till right. something happened to me. Then you say, oh, my God, he was so amazing or she was so amazing. And your parents, call your parents every now and then. So it's it's a song to let people look deep within themselves. That's what I want the song to do, to let to let you reflect. And, it's a, it's, and guess what? <laughs> We're in a time of COVID where we ain't got nothing else to do. Some people right. working, give thanks to all the, the frontline workers, the, the people that are delivering our mail and people that, that we can get groceries groceries and toilet paper because imagine if those people weren't there well, imagine exactly. what it, it would be worse it would be mayhem exactly. on, in this, on this planet so it's it's appreciation exactly. for those people as well it's a song of dedication appreciation and devotion i love it i really really love this song so now we've we uh, and by the way we are giving you your roses right now okay uh, I was on two lives prior to this one talking about you. So, you know, and you missed the part. So I'll just repeat it that, you know, actually I posted recently the interview that I did with you at the Soul Train Awards in 2010. And I was just letting that. people know that that was one of my first major events that I covered. And I'll never, I get emotional, I'm such a big baby, but I'll just never forget how kind you were to stop and talk with me. I mean, who the heck was our Red Capuchelli? Nobody don't know the Red Capuchelli. And you came, and you didn't just like talk to me for two minutes. I mean, you did a full on interview with me and I've always been so thankful for that. I really give thanks. I'm giving you your flowers now. We love you. And there's a place for people like you. Thank you. I'll never forget that when I saw you on that red carpet because, you know, for me, I was like a fish out of water. It was the first time I think it's the first time I ever went to any award show. You know, I went to the big, <laughs> big up to, to, to Ray, man, my, my brother Ray, that that invited me to the first one. And I, I, I didn't even know how to dress because, I, you know, I'm used to dress. I'm going to music and, you know, our music is very militant and very spiritual <laughs> driven music. So we dress like in, you know, uniforms of like we're ready for, for, for the war, you know, the music. <laughs> So I didn't know how to dress. I got this suit, looked like I was going to Sunday church. And I was like, <laughs> following the year, I, I, you know, I kind of got it together to say, okay, you got to look like an artist, you know? And so I've grown so much. And th on that day, when I w went, got nominated for a Soul Train Award, which, you know, is, is not easy because a lot of people don't really are so focused on Grammys and Billboard Awards. And, you know, that's Soul Train Awards that, Don King, a black entrepreneur, formed Soul Train, you know. It was black owned. Mm -hmm. And that's these are right. the that I've always done. So when I hear people talking now today in to in 2020, support black owned businesses and this and that. And I'm like, we've been doing that long time. So when I saw you as a black entrepreneur building your thing, I have to say, yo, oh you mean red carpet Shelly Day I took? Oh you mean <laughs> it didn't matter because Red Cup, we don't know where Red Carpet Shelly could be 5, 10, 20 years from after there, you know? And that's how I look at life. That's how I look at people that you were there representing Caribbean people. So I'm after stuff and talk to you. 
I really, really appreciated that. I always wanted to say that to you. So thank you so much for that. So now we have the single people like you. Yeah. When is the yeah. next solo project, the whole album dropping? Because, you know, we've been waiting a long time for that. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you said it on the interview. When are we going to get volume two? And in a, sense, <laughs> in a sense, this is kind of volume two, where that okay. reggae country kind of thing is going to... I love that. Yeah, it's going to... Okay. Oh, I mean, there you are. You were out for a second there. They ain't going to lose us this time. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was your question again, Shelly? Was was well, I, you were just responding. I was asking about, you know, when you're going to drop the next project, and you were saying, you know, this is volume two. <laughs> it, it's really where you're going to hear country music, um, reggae, a little bit of R&B. You're going to hear... You're going to hear Gramps, you know? Like, people ask me, even some people that's been playing um, my new single, People Like You, it's my first single I, as a solo artist in eight years. And they're saying, when are we going to hear another... Um, I mean, what, what kind of format is it? What do you call it? Is it? What kind of song is this? You know, is, this a, is it a reggae song? Is it a country song? And I tell you, what kind of song? It's a Gramps Morgan song. <laughs> It, it, it doesn't a, have to fit into a box. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just so excited that people are really getting into the the song. And, and my son has been on my back for how long? Like maybe for the past four or five years. Like, Pops, when are you going to put out a solo record? Or, you know, it's like, and he's like, people always want to, you know, enjoy your voice. It's just something different. And when my son starts saying it, so during this time, I'm looking at myself and the only thing I was working on is trying to become a better songwriter. That was it. It wasn't about no record and no, we had, no, no, that has nothing to do with it. And then, you know, cause we're in the middle of putting together a new Morgan heritage album um, to, to release. We was in the studio recording. So this just came out of blue. This is just God's plan, you know? And then we right. family and talked to my dad and talked to him, Peter and Mojo and Yuna and Luke's and they was like, yo, this song is amazing. You better get to work. The, the universe is talking. And Mojo starts sending out my song and setting up interviews for me. And so it, it's, it's an amazing thing. It is an amazing thing. You, you mentioned your father, and I was telling um, your fans who were on here earlier, you know, that your father, Thank famed, you so his famed <laughs> artist in, of his own right, Denroy Morgan, do you consult with him about your music a lot? That's my father. Uh -huh. Father, may he ever be blessed with life. That's my father. Honor thy mother and thy father that their days may be long upon this earth. So that's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, he is the founder and the discoverer of talent within the Morgan family when it comes to right. Morgan, LMS, and the dreads. So right. I can go around that. And, and my father is one of my biggest fans on top of that, you know. He's one of Morgan Heritage's biggest fans. He was there when, when we didn't know ourselves, when we were just developing our musical talents and when he was paying for um, our music lessons. So how, you know, so he's like, they're like the Oracle, like in the Matrix, you know? Some <laughs> counsel with, and he's, your, he's our elder. So we have counsel with it and, you know, and it was the same thing with the first round. We sat down as a family, when I did my first solo album and Peter started doing some solo songs and Mojo and Yuna, we sat down as a family. No one jumps out and just say, Yo, I'm out, man. You know, that people, right. people was like, oh, Gramps, mash up the group. Peter, mash up. Oh, Gramps and Peter now talk. People are saying some things. And it was very entertaining. As you know, we are in the entertainment. <laughs> Caribbeans are very entertaining. This, you know, is facts. <laughs> nice. So we had a question in the group. Yeah. Uh, which artists are going to be on your next project? Oh, <laughs> that's top secret. Like my boy DJ Khaled said, everything is top secret. <laughs> Do is release an EP album. 
within the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. A new Gramps Morgan. That'll be the first Gramps Morgan album in in uh, eight years since reggae music. Right. And then right. uh, we'll probably drop another one, a full album by the summer. Just depends on how everything is, is moving and feeling. Well, you know, you definitely can always, you know, go live anytime you want and sing the song because we, we just love it. We all, we, we would love to hear it over and over again. I play it on repeat again. That song has definitely touched my heart. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Typically when we do interviews here on Caribbean Life TV, we kind of start from the beginning and move our way up. But, you know, I could talk to you for four hours if I did that, try to go back from day one with your career. We'd be on here till tomorrow. So I definitely, you know, wanted to start there first with people like you. But I'd be remiss if I didn't go back to um, the Grammys. Yeah. And tell me what it was like when you were nominated and then you actually won that year, 2017, I believe, when you won. Tell me what that was like for you. It, it was a fulfilling energy. It was a moment of appreciation and fulfillment, you know. And at the same time, it's like there's still more work to do, right? Mm. Notice... A lot of time, artists win a Grammy, they kind of like either fall off or they become better or they win a second mm -hmm. Grammy. And, you know, for us, it was like back to the drawing boards. Let's go. That's done. That's old news. That you're as big as your, your last hit record. So, for, but, but the, 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 the moment when we got the nomination, it was like, oh my God, it was tears. It was like all of my father's hard work and sacrifice, you know? Right. The the, the 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 musical teachers from Thelonious Monk Jr. to Carlos Garnett to Eugene Gray to Miss Fully Love to Mrs. Jennings to George Myers, all these people that had helped you along the way to know about music and experience music that my father had brought in our lives to learn music. It was like that you have arrived to even when we went did and so did solo projects and me watching India Ari perform every night on stage and learning from her, learning the vocal things, watching John Legend perform every night while I'm on tour with him and just learning, watching Buju Bantan perform every night while I was on tour with him and just learning. And then boom, when the nomination came, it was like, this has got to be a joke. <laughs> right? It's so long in the business and no other album didn't, never got nominated. Don't have to dread to be Rasta. That album was an incredible oh, album. Oh, man. But Listen, I still I sing that song all the time. <laughs> yeah. But at the time, we didn't know certain things in the business, and so it was just a build up. Nothing before the time we've learned so much, and have, and now we're sharing that knowledge with so many of our different artists. That after that, you know, I I was able to to, to help other artists and help them de develop a product because now you understand that the kind of mix is very important the quality of musicians that you use, the quality of your recording. These are the things that make you qualify for nominations because there's a room of people that sit down and scrutinize your album to see if everything right. on, you know, on the album is first class. The mixing, the mastering, all these things are very, very important. So if those things are not on point, then even if they're great songs, even if they're hit records, because I've heard great hits, but the mix was bad. Mm. And those are the things able to learn over the years and say, okay, this is how you do it. Okay. Right. And then we, 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 when we fulfill that, it was like, okay, we've arrived. You know, and then we right. share that with Itana. You know, I, I helped produce that album. It got nominated. You know, Rage and Fire which is managed by my brother. Luke. Okay, well, now I'm learning something. I didn't know that you had produced um, with Atana on her on that album. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, um, Jay Book, you know. Um, I know you worked with him, yeah. Yeah, okay. Rage and Fire. There's so many things. I mean, I now I end up with, what, nine nominations and three wins. So it's, it's a blessing, you know, that, you know, after the knowledge of learning what it takes 
to, 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 to bring the music. Yeah, authenticity is important, but the quality of the music is very important. And, I, and we have to hold each other accountable as Caribbean artists to say, let's put out quality music. Right. You know, that brings me to another thing, you know, You've always been, an, uh, another reason I've admired you and your family, uh, you, I think very early on, you, you really did understand the business side yeah. of the yeah. music industry. Um, how did you realize, okay, listen, there's some things that I need to do here on the business side in order to achieve a certain level of you know, success, professionalism, or whatever you want to call it? How did that come about? Well, because I've noticed that with you and your family. We were blessed, Shelly. It was a blessing and a curse. Because sometimes you, you, you try to administrate your business and people tell you, say, oh, them go on like them better than people. Oh, I don't want to tell you she, she thinks she knew everything. Um, so, so it can be a curse, right? And also for us, it was from the beginning, from day one, my dad wanted to make sure mm. to understand the business. I had my mm. own recording studio at 17 years old, right? Wow. It was a 24 track before there was Pro Tools and and and, and, and Fruity Loops and, and Logic and before all of these things. I'm talking two inch tape, you know? That's not yeah. who Morgan Heritage just coming from. And I'm coming from the 16 track days. I missed the eight track because I wasn't born yet. But when we had a 16 track recording studio and then my dad ended up buying a 24 track um, tape machine. So it's from these, those days my father taught us about publishing and how to produce. And the, we work with some of the greats, M2 May, you know, um, mm. Onius Monk. So we learned um, the, the necessities on how to produce a great record. We learned that from mm -hmm. young. So even though you, you've learned the formula, you still have to do it over and over and over and over again. It's like if you bake a cake for the first time from scratch, more so than likely, the first one is going to be kind of messed up, right? Right. <laughs> if you do it 15, 16 times, that cake is going to become perfection. I love that. I love that. And, you know, anyone that knows me, especially when it comes around the time of the year for the Grammys, and if I'm interviewing any artists, I always ask them, are you a voting member of the Academy? Are you a member of the Academy? And I would say 90% of the time, the answer is no. That's and I'm always encouraging artists to become a member. It's really not that hard. If you're a recording artist and you put out work, you basically would qualify. So please tell some of the artists in this room why it's important. Well, it's sad. And I, and I got to send a special shout out to Christy Barber, who personally took on making artists aware, especially in Jamaica, there was times when Christy Barber went and bought money orders for the for the for the fee because there's a fee you have to sign up for it. There's like right. five dollars or fifty. I don't remember what it was at the time. And Christy Barber took our own money and paid for it so artists could sign up. And Pick up Christy Barber. I love Christy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So she's very. When it comes to those things, she's so serious and very. Wait, I say passionate about those things. And she was one. She was the forefront runner when it came to the awareness, because everybody goes and votes and say, "Oh, only this artist are going and this artist all oh. right." And if you're not in the lottery, you can't win. And if you don't know, tell how to them, win, tell you them. Can't. <laughs> and so we, when the nominations come out, did you vote? Did you submit your album? Do you know how to submit an album? So this is the knowledge where we have to educate ourselves. It's like what white people are doing now with this whole Black Lives Matter things, you find that black history books are now sold out of Amazon and Barnes and Nobles mm -hmm. because guess what? Black people don't tell our history enough. We don't talk about Africa enough. We don't visit Africa enough. We don't talk about our Africanism enough. So what mm -hmm. happens now is that the white people are just, they didn't know that, you know, this man got shot. They don't know, a lot of people don't know about Malcolm X. Mm. The, the, the only one of the great, biggest freedom fighters of black people was that people glorify in the United States is Martin Luther King. But then, mm -hmm. uh, and, and look at it, Nelson Mandela, but one to Ayla Selassie, I want to, there's so many others. Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey, Frederick Douglass, P. 
people don't mm -hmm. talk about those things, and that is the problem with black people. We, who you want? Somebody else to tell our history? We have to tell and share our history and educate other people about who we are so they can have an appreciation and understand our struggle, understand what we've been through. And hence, all the books about black history I know sold out because white people now are saying, when they see you know the George Floyd thing, it's like, man, that's enough. What's going on, America? And now they are holding the, the, the powers that be accountable. So it's a beautiful thing. I think we're in a beautiful time. It, it's sad that it takes George Floyd debt for people to rise up, but there was a one-year-old that was killed by black people and in New York. I, I don't hear about it. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Black Lives Matter organization will show up and do something about it because you know that's mm -hmm. sad. There, there was an eight-year-old killed here in Atlanta as well. And ironically, this child, this girl was killed right by the Rayshard Brooks Wendy's right at that property. And I, I, and I still am dumbfounded by the senselessness of this. And the so it's like we're looting. It's like people want a reason to go go to Antif, not a supermarket, Antif, not Target, and Walmart. They want a reason, but what is the real reason? When you say black on black crime, why aren't we marching for those things? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that get me angry, you know. And until black people reconnect back with Africa, reconnect back with the energy, reconnect back with the stories, the history, most black people don't even know about the transatlantic slave trade. They just know that, oh, 400 years, man, of slavery. And... Do you know what happened? Do you know about the Asante Kingdom? One of the only black monarchies still alive, other than the Queen of England, the royal families? They don't know. So all you want people to respect you. Listen, Shelly, you get me started. Fire. Well, <laughs> well, talk to me about that, because I know over the last few years, you've definitely connected to the motherland over in Ghana and you've you've spent a lot of time over there. Tell me why that's been so so important for you in your journey. Since 1994, Margaret has been going to Africa. First time we went to Africa, two other people were given this um, honor of being crowned king of, a, of this village. Michael Jackson and LL Cool J. My father was the third human being that got that um, wow. honor. And big up to Josie Torre, who took us to Ivory Coast for the very first time. If one, if we tune in, black people, tune into ourselves, that inner, that inner, you're going to hear the voice. See, you may hear some drums like, Matata, you know, or you may hear the small voice saying, come home. And it happened to me even, what, I think it was four, four years ago. Morgan Heritage. We was on tour, and after the tour finished, I said to my brothers, yo, I'm going to Ghana. I said, you're going, mm. you're going to Ghana? I've never been to Ghana, never had a show. The first time I went to, to Ghana is I Fly Myself. Oh, wow. And I went there, and I just, it was just, and I called, I knew people that lived there, so I made a couple phone calls and just said, I want to come there. And I said, all right, just come stay with us. And before you know it, it turned into a a big homecoming thing and they welcomed me and now I'm a chief in Ghana. You know, a lot of people didn't know that. So it just, you have to listen to that inner voice to say, just, just take the time to make the connection because if you make the connection, you'll feel it, man. And so it wasn't no big epiphany or big grand stunt. Da, 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 we're going to Africa. It was no big, it was no big announcement. <clears throat> It was just being in tune to oneself. And once you tune into in yourself, tune to you're going to feel it, Shelly. Love it. Tune into yourself. But I, I actually have um, some a couple more questions before I go. And thank you so much for being patient. Shout out yeah. to the First Lady of Caribbean Life TV, Wendy in the building. I want you to talk to your fans about your work with your foundation, the Morgan Heritage Foundation. Talk to us about the work you do there because you're also very philanthropic and, and I love and appreciate you for that as well. Well, I, I'll, the size of my family, I shouldn't be giving away nothing. Cause my father, <laughs> I, 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 
the size of my family is so big. I remember the days when we was eating bully beef and white rice and sardine and white rice out of the can just to survive. I mean, who in the Caribbean has not had that meal? Come on. All right. Man. It's the staple. You understand? When you eat your bully beef and white rice, I shouldn't even be giving away money and giving her these things. But, you know, it, it, to whom much is given, much is required. And if you are blessed, so you must share the blessing. Amen. So it's, it's a thing where uh, we were in, in Kenya. We made a trip there. And we was like, what can we do? We are not pastors and preachers and, you know, not Bill Gates and these big guys. But what can we do? And we said, we are good in the music business. So we put on a concert. We went and visited. Um, in, in, uh, this was, when was this? 2011? Anne-Marie. Um, a friend of ours from, from, from Kenya, from Nairobi, we went there and we gave away uh, rugby balls, soccer balls, school books, book bags. And I'm talking about, you're talking about ghettos in the Caribbean. Listen, you ain't seen no ghetto till you've been to some of these slums in Nairobi, okay? Mm. Where people don't have, wa not, not even hot water, don't talk about hot water, don't have water. And we were able wow. to go and give away um, HIV testing kits, um, help women to, 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 to able to understand how to manage their period. Simple things like that, you know, that we take for granted and not having, don't know, having access to sanitary napkins, um, mm. these water tablets that can help to purify water. Um, right. So a lot of things like, simple things like that, but you know, we didn't put all those things on Facebook and Instagram. As a couple of the, we took a couple of pictures and let people know we were there. And then I worked with an organization called Shashamani Sunrise, where we did some things in Ethiopia, where the model was one pencil equal a child's education. There were some kids mm -hmm. there in Ethiopia that couldn't go to school. You know why? You know why, Shelly? Because mm -hmm. they didn't have a pencil. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I had a friend of mine that she told me that too. So I sent some as well. She took a trip there and it's just so much that we take for granted. I mean, to not have just a pencil and a notebook, just a simple, not no fancy book, just a simple notebook that yep. you could write in, yep. um, that we would just take for granted, you know? Real. Wow. So amazing. So another thing. I have so many things I admire about you. But another thing that I admire about you is that you also make sure you have, you know, multiple streams of revenue and you have now a CBD business. So talk to me about that. What made you want to get into the CBD business? Well, it's because I'm a princess and she's a scientist, um, graduated Vanderbilt University. And, and, and really, after the birth of our son, my son, I mean, that's a whole nother interview. I'm trying to give you the short version he basically was born having multiple seizures. This was right before I won the Grammy. And mm -hmm. this is a story that I still haven't even told, how I ended up in the cannabis industry. And she changed her whole thing to find a medicine for him through cannabis. Because at the time, cannabis was starting to become popular as a medicine to help kids with seizures and epilepsy and with all kinds of different disorders. And she made one of the best in the world that we end up in Fobbs magazine four times. Four times in Forbes magazine and had nothing to do with music. <laughs> Zero. Wow. And probably a, yeah. you're probably the first time hearing this for the first time. So they call CBD the number one CBD in the world. We don't put it into some, you can go at the gas stations. It retails for two eighty nine a bottle because it is one of the best. It helped my son. And one day I will show people what my son went through and where he is today. But it's, 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 it's really something um, on what this medicine has done. And as you mentioned it, I am probably going to give a free, I'm going to, I'm going to give a discount. I'm going to post it, Shelly, so people can have a discount today. I'm going to post it on our page, on my page. So stay tuned after this. Oh, wow. Give thanks. I'm, I'm definitely going to try it out and uh, let you know how it works because I know my, I'm a little ick. I'm peeing on things. So. Yeah, it's not only for pain, you're talking about for um, it helps with diabetes. Now, we make no 
claims because, of course, the FDA could be watching. So we don't make any <laughs> claims. <laughs> so it helps with... You know, talking people, about you talking business. <laughs> yeah, people with, with people that have high anxiety, people that just very nervous. I've met people that are standing in front of me and just shaking. I was in Kenya during the time of one of our... Um, festivals we did a, a festival in in uh, Kenya called Tomorrow's Leaders and this girl was just shaking and I had one sample in my bag and I said I call my, I call my wife and I said listen I think we can get this to this young lady how much I must give her and I told the young lady and the lady was the girl was just shaking like this, shaking shaking and I'm like I, she actually we was at the mall and an autograph signing, and I saw her, and she was just, I thought because she was meeting us, and she was nervous, and she said, no, it's okay, and she was actually working for me, oh, wow. <laughs> and, and it was, she shared with me that she had a condition, Shelly, I gave it to her, and she, I said, come to my hotel tomorrow, she came, I gave it to her, the woman stopped shaking, wow, Stop. I've seen people with vertigo, people that can't go to the bathroom in one week, took our product, Boom, they call me. I went to the bathroom. Some people call me and say, what is this stuff? I can't. I... Shelly? There's a friend of mine on here from uh, Brooklyn, and her son, she says, could probably benefit from that. So they want to know the exact name of the product. It's called Messiah. I'm going to type it right now so somebody, nobody can say, I don't know. Messiah. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Um, you know, Gramps, I could talk to you forever and ever and ever. You've been in the business forever. So uh, Messiah Medical, thank you for that. And yes, Messiah so. is happy in the Filipino language. Nice. Because we love happy. It. We love product, it. I've seen my son. My son is missing 38% of his brain. And and when I tell you, listen, <laughs> go to Messiah, people, go to Messiah Medical on IG right now and click the link in the bio and you will learn the story of what exactly I've been doing on my downtime. Wow. You do so much, Grams. I don't know where you find the time. I don't know if you have a few clones out there because, you know, you might have figured out how to clone yourself. <laughs> I don't know, but... Between Morgan Heritage, a solo career, being a dad, producing, managing the CBD business, philanthropic work. I mean, you know, there's a place for people like you. Oh, Richie. hallelujah. Amen. And I want to tell you that is, is when I meet different people on different levels, I'm encouraged because I'm just getting started. You know, I just try my best to to take care of myself. You know, like today I had a bad headache, so I, you know, I gotta go get some reflexology. And one of the things with my dad, he was such he is such a hard worker that you know. But one of the things I always remember him, he would go to the ch Chinatown in New York and get jump ginseng and take care of himself. And that's the problem with a lot of us young men today. We're not taking care of ourselves, so you can't work hard and not take time to really take care of yourself. So. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for you even having me today and, and that we could talk and, and share this energy with a lot of people today. And hopefully this will reach tens and twenties of millions of people to understand that we, it, 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 it's okay to, to, to be kind. You know, we need more kindness. We need more kindness. We, we just thank you so much for joining us here on Caribbean Life TV. And before you go, if you have any parting words, for your fans. I would love them to go to YouTube. Make sure they subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Gramps Morgan and watch the video and just feel the essence of the song and just get ready to, to really uh, enjoy a piece of Gramps Morgan and the Morgan family um, with this new solo album that's coming next month. Um, and it's going to take you to a place of reflection within ourselves because we got to get deeper within ourselves. We got to be better. We can't come out of this whole COVID thing, the same people you came in. It's like, okay, right. be, what were you doing before COVID? Right. And COVID done now. And it's like, oh man, I'm just chilling. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I call it BC before COVID. Yeah. So, yeah, for real. Well, thank well, you for having me, man. And shout out to everybody and 
continue to support Caribbean Live TV. Make sure y'all follow. Thank you so much. And I want to give a special thank you to Tracy from Halo Entertainment. And also a big shout out to Rico Vibes, my brother from another mother. Thank you, Rico, Grand for waking me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You're a busy man. We thank you so much for joining us today. Grant Morgan. Thank you. One love. Bye-bye. So, people, that was the great, the one and only Grams Morgan. You see, patience, it pays off. So we thank him so much for joining us. I want to thank all of you for joining us. I want to give a big shout out to all of the Caribbean Life TV people in the building. Cherry Garden, I did see you. Rosolo, Ozzy, Wendy. Rebel, Raylene, thank you for being always supportive. Sandy, I saw uh, my cousin from Philly, Kyla, in the building. You know, everybody, as usual, just got to say thank you for joining in. Ozzy is always in the background, you know, asking wonderful questions again. Thank you so much again to Rico Vibes and Cherry Garden. You know, tomorrow, Cherry Garden, is she's doing her show every Wednesday. On Thursdays, we have Back on Track with Rosolo and Saturdays on the Road with Rebel Mass. I am Red Carpet Shelly, so my IG is pinned there at the bottom. If you are not following Red Carpet Shelly, go ahead, go follow her. She got a lot of things going on. She's popping. That's me. That's your girl. Make sure you're following Cabby and Life TV. If you just happen to come here from Gramps Live but you weren't following us, Follow Caribbean Life TV and all the other hosts. Like I said, Cherry Garner and Rose Solo, Rebel Mass, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. Stay safe out there, people, okay? Stay safe. One love. Going to let you listen to some more of the song before we go so you can hear it. And again, it's called People Like You, and it's available on all digital platforms right now so take a listen it's a beautiful song i'm gonna turn it up a little bit more for you and again the song is called people like you very inspiring song. Cherry Garden, big up yourself. Bye-bye, everyone. Stay safe. One love. <laughs>